Hey everyone, how's it going? My name is Sodavine and welcome to my channel. This channel is all about combining music, engineering, and business together. So I'm so glad you guys are here. So as you know, I did my MBA at Queens. Before I did my MBA, so many people would ask me, hey, why are you doing an MBA? What's the point of this? You know, you can learn everything you can learn from an MBA online, which is not actually true. I wanted to make a video to talk about what my main learnings were and my main takeaways from the MBA program. So I went to Queens, I did the one year MBA program, I quit my job and I moved to Kingston. And then after my one year, I spent four months doing an exchange program at ESSEC in Paris. And because it was COVID, I didn't actually physically get to go to ESSEC. And, and so I, I had a slightly different MBA experience, but at the same time, it's still valid. So these are not in any particular order. So let's go through these. First learning how businesses are actually created. I know in daily life, we often hear about things like, hey, this company raised series D funding, or they have an angel investor, or they have X, Y, Z. I never actually knew what any of that meant. <laughs> and I, obviously I knew what it meant, like just on the surface, but I didn't know what the implications were, what that, what that truly meant, how a company starts, what is needed, what are some things you can do to actually get the ball rolling? What should you prioritize when you're doing this? Hey, you know, you don't even have to raise money depending on the kind of business. I also learned what are the downsides of raising money? Let's say you raise $2 million. What does that actually mean? Well, now you have a giant stake in your business that's held by someone else that will probably tell you what to do or someone that you'll have to justify your decisions to. So there's so much there that I learned that was below the surface. Second big learning, how do investments work? How does the financial industry work? So my background being in engineering, I didn't really learn how to do financial analysis. I, I could do it. It's not that technically complex, but I just had never been exposed to it. So I learned all of the different ways that investments are built. What is the point of an investment? How does the stock market actually function? Uh, what does it mean when a company is publicly traded? Why is that advantageous? And I'm not just saying like surface level understanding, like obviously you want people to invest in your company, and but really the implications of being publicly traded, the implications of knowing how to build a portfolio. We had a whole lecture on FIRE, which is financially independent, retire early. How do you actually manage your personal finances so that you can retire when you want to retire? So things like this were really fundamental for me. So number three, I learned what is a brand? What is a brand? Before the MBA, brand to me was just marketing. The branding is done well. People can recognize this brand, trust this brand, and, and are willing to pay money for this brand. That was really it. And this is how a brand looks and feels. After the MBA, I really understood the value of a brand. A brand to me now is a promise and the brand having an emotional component to it. There are emotions that are felt when a customer interacts with a brand. And there's also ownership of the brand. So the brand itself is to be owned by the CEO of the company, not the marketing team. So there's so much there that I learned that I took away to bring to music, to bring to my luxury marketing stuff, to bring to my work that I do now. But really understanding what a brand is, what a brand promise is, is transformative because that's really your promise for your whole company. Fourth major thing that I learned was how to negotiate. How do you actually negotiate? I learned the basic principles of negotiation like anchoring and trade-offs and things like that. But then I also learned how to actually do it. <laughs> so we had a negotiations class that we were role playing and we did a five party negotiation, a two party negotiation, a three party negotiation, and actually putting those principles to use. That was really, really, really interesting. Really understanding how negotiations can play out over multiple days or how to handle your emotions during a negotiation is so powerful. Things like avoiding runoff scenarios, avoiding a situation where you're really getting pinned against the wall on a negotiation. How do you step out of that? So there's so much there that I learned on negotiating that I honestly would never have learned on my own. There's no way I would have learned this on my own. The fifth thing I learned was how to pitch basically anything. So we learned how to uncover needs, how to fill those needs, how to then communicate those needs. So we learned how to make a really, really effective, for example, 
10 slide pitch deck. How do you make the most effective 10 slide pitch deck? You can literally pitch anything. You can pitch the FIFA World Cup, you can pitch the Olympics, or you can pitch something really small like why you should buy a new car. <laughs> that was a core, core takeaway from the NBA that was super effective for me and super, super helpful. So those are the five main foundational learnings that I had from the NBA. Now I have six more learnings that I felt were really useful, but maybe not as core foundational. So the first one there is how do you handle personal stress? And there was so much emphasis on this. And one key takeaway there for me was the focus on your locus of control, on how do you control the controllables, really focus on what you have on the table and make the best out of that. If you don't think like that, things tend to balloon. Things get way too big and you can't really make a decision. So it's really important that you focus on what you actually can control and how do you get into that mindset. The second great learning here is how do you have a tough conversation with someone? How do you tell someone that they're doing something that you don't really like at all? You know, that's a tough conversation to have, especially in a workplace where you really need these relationships. How do you have those conversations in a tactful way? A lot of times the NBA also told me that there are times where you just can't do anything. Well, like when you're working with someone and they're just not on the same wavelength, you know, there's not much you can do. You give them this feedback and they might not take it. They probably won't take it if they're not on the same kind of perspective as you. And then how do you work with that? How do you deal with that? That was really, really foundational for me because it changed how I viewed my teams. Oftentimes I'd be like overly idealistic, like we have to get this team to work together well, we have to get this. But in reality, that's often not the case. Like not every team is going to be able to become world-class. There might just be players on the team that aren't gonna work well together. And so how do you deal with that as a leader or even just a team member? Like third great learning here is strategy. What is strategy? Why does it exist? <laughs> strategy, it's all about making trade-offs. That was really interesting for me. If you wanna get something, you will have to trade other things off to get it. It's a law, it's a principle. You cannot get everything. Thinking like that changed my perspective on how I was looking at business. Really, really cool. Some more learnings here. I learned the foundations and key elements of a luxury brand. What is a luxury brand? What's the difference between a luxury brand and just a normal brand? How come luxury brands can charge three, four, five, ten 10x what a standard brand can charge? I learned about how these are built and how they relate with human culture and human society. Really, really understanding the depths of that. Super, super cool. And that was a big learning for me. And the last great learning was how do you find a job? <laughs> Finding a job is really, really important. Anytime in your life, you might need to find a job. What's the right way to do that? You know, oftentimes people just go cold apply to a bunch of places or message people on LinkedIn. There is actually a method to this madness and you can use to optimize how you're gonna find these jobs. Really learning that and having people guiding you through that is so important. Now there's a lot here that I'm just blasting through right now. And you know, keep in mind that this took me more than a year, like 16 months to do my MBA, right? So, you know, the people that say you can learn all this stuff online, yeah, totally. Like if you know exactly what you're doing, you can totally look up say YouTube videos on, on each of the subjects I've talked about. And you can learn this through experience as well and kind of trial and erroring it. But the thing is, it's gonna take you a lot of time, like 10 plus years to figure this out on your own. And the thing is, you still might have holes in your knowledge areas that you don't really fully understand or areas that you might not even know that exist. Really understanding the stakeholders in each part of the organization is so important. And lastly, you know, when things get tough and whenever you're working or you're doing whatever you're doing in your life, you're gonna end up relying on what's ingrained and what's in your intuition. And there's so much here that has been ingrained into how I work now from these learnings that I don't think would have been ingrained in me unless I actually did the program. So yeah, you can you can sit back, you can print out the MBA curriculum from any MBA school and then just buy the textbook and read it. But that's like saying you can just buy the textbook and read it and become a doctor or <laughs> buy a textbook and read it and become a lawyer. Like there's so many parts of becoming a doctor or becoming a lawyer that have to do with you going through the experience of it. And you can't really just read that stuff, right? Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope this makes your decision easier on whether or not you should do an MBA or just give some more knowledge on like what an MBA actually gives you. So thanks so much for watching. I'm so happy you guys were here. Make sure you like, comment, share, and subscribe. And I will see you in the next video.